Content warning. This podcast is intended for a mature audience. Contains graphic descriptions of violence and explicit language. Hello, friends, and welcome to Pods of the Multiverse. We are an unofficial D&D podcast where four of us get together and play D&D in some of our favorite settings. My name is Jeppy, and I will be portraying the world of Icewind Dale and several of its inhabitants. Joining me are three of my favorite people playing the characters navigating Icewind Dale. I'm Scala. I play Wink Wuggins, Halfling Bard, friend to Meepo Mappo, Mappo Trucko, Ruffle Huffle, Stutley Jorth, Brainock, Lilu Charn, and Tim Tet. Got it in one. Got it in one. <laughs> and uh, and now you two <laughs> need to follow that up. Good, good, good. Yeah, great. All right. Well, my name's... Ma- my name drop isn't as... <laughs> Fuck off! <laughs> yeah, follow that up. That's right. Okay, fuck you. I'm Andy. I play Everett, the Reborn Ranger, who probably didn't pick a fight with Dracula in his past life, but honestly can't say or no. And I'm Jimmy. I play Jib, the sea elf fighter. And, uh, you know, I'm from Noralu. I like to haul rope. And uh, that's what I do. Still coming in handy to this day. That rope pollen does does come in handy. Yeah. Not so much a joke as much as a fact. It's a fact, yeah. Jib fact. Especially yeah. when you conveniently find it on a corpse on top of a ice wall. That's right. Thank you all so much for listening. As always, please review. Check us out on Discord, Twitter. Uh, please check out our Patreon. We would hella appreciate that. And with all that stuff out of the way, let's get into episode four. Last we left our heroes, they were staring down a large, merciless ice wall making their way towards Tourmaline. After braving the climb, trekking the mountain, felling a basilisk covered in wraithesite, and regaling a band of Twingas with a tail or two, they found themselves at the foot of the other side of Carowind Mountains. Now, our heroes stand at the gate to Tourmaline, looking for more information about wraithesite and why it may have ended up in the hands of the cult back in the care. Okay, so, the three of you making your way towards the gates of Tourmaline want to do anything before you hit the gate? I look down to Wink as we're walking and I say, You may have it in you, Wink, to try and ask me about the story I told those Javingas, but please, let us keep it at a necessary part of getting out of that forest without any further delay. Look, I understand why you say that. It's not my place to pry more than would make you comfortable. It's clear, from what you've said, that you've experienced some considerable trauma. No life passes without that. I guess all I got to say is, you tell me when you're ready or don't. (sighs) Every keeps walking. These fucking edgelords. Sorry. (laughs) Jim, what about them sea monsters? Oh, what about them? You thinking you'll ever see one? No, I hope not. Nasty things by the sounds of them. Yeah. They live way out there, you know. I'm not a sailor, like my brother. I stay by the shore. I understand. Your brother, where's he sail from and to? Oh, just up and down the coast. You know, carrying goods, raw materials, water deep, back and forth. Not glamorous work, but, uh, you know, he's the talk of the town, you know. We all stay at home, hauling rope, and he's out there sailing the high seas and comes back with all these stories. But, you know, I was the good son. I stayed home. Fair enough. Somebody's got to do it. I stayed home until recently. Anywho. Oh my god. It's just the best. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> Anywho. <laughs> I think Everett would actually wince a bit at the tail end of that story. Particularly when Jim brings up responsibility. Jim or Jib? Sorry. <laughs> when Jib brings up. Mm. As we're sort of trudging across this field. Alright. What do we see? Perception, I'm only looking at an 11. It's a nat 20. It's a good start. Beautiful start to the night. 21 total. A four. Wink, you see that it's probably a town. You don't say. You definitely have made it to a town. And if you rolled even a one on insight, it's probably Tourmaline. You are at level, but I will give you, between what you're seeing in front of you and what you were able to quickly glimpse at from a distance as you made your way down from the peak of the Carowin Mountain, you see a town on its western end, a riverbank. To its north, there is a forest. To its east side, you remember making your way down the mountain. The buildings start to dissipate and then tents and encampments going in that direction. Otherwise, what's in front of you is rows and rows of buildings and houses. And the town is definitely bigger than Cair Denival. Cair Denival probably had 30, 40 buildings. This town may be closer to 100. Many of them houses. What you see in front of you in this row 
you can tell that you're probably about two rows of buildings away from the riverside, so you're on the west end of town as you walk in through this main gate area. You see more activity towards the back of town. On a 20, you can probably guess that the back of town is where maybe their tavern is. I'm going to be this jerk again. What time of day is it? So it was afternoon when I believe you all encountered the Twingas. That was towards the end of your trek, so, I don't know, 3 p.m.? Okay. So yeah, you can tell that kind of the back end of town has got some activity going on. Otherwise, you see people going about their day. You don't have any information that Kessa gave you in terms of where the speaker would be located in town or where exactly this mine is in relation to town. You could ask around. You could start making your way towards the back of town. You could just start wandering around aimlessly, but I leave it all to you. Is there like a gate or something, or is it just like an open... It's an open gate. So it's like a... Uh, what's the name of that place in fucking Andy? Hook me up here. Fellowship of the Ring, the first town they go to when they it's first. Brie. Bree, thank you. Yeah, it's just like a wooden kind of wooden open gate welcoming people. Thank you. Is there a gatekeeper at the gate? No, this is not a gate kept town, but I will say this like you see a few different manner of citizens along this row. There's plenty of people you could go and talk to if you wanted to ask like, for directions or whatever. It's, take your pick. Sure. There are enough people where if you're looking for a certain type, I'll make up the NPC. I'm just looking for the first person we see who looks like they live here. The first body. You see a halfling. Older female, you see her. She's just walking down the street in the direction of the northern side of town, which is where you're seeing that activity. So you're just going to see her slowly walking, but she looks like she knows where she's going. Yeah, I'll greet her in the halfling tongue. Howdy there! Hey, hello! Sorry, my acquaintances and I are new in town, and I'll switch back into common. And we was just wondering, we're looking for a mine? We're here to tell us some strange things might be going on there, and we're liable to check them out. Could you point us that direction? Oh, the Crimson Glimmer? Yeah, no problem. You're going to go all the way up north, and then you're going to go and hang a right. That'll take you eastward. And, uh, yeah, Bob's your uncle, basically. What's going on at the mines? I haven't heard anything. Oh, well, there's something strange to do with all that rate sight. Beg pardon. Uh, my name's Periwinkle Wuggins. Y'all can call me Wink. Who might you be? My name's Nimsy. Ah, oh, well, Nimsy. I don't know how much you know about this here Wraith site, but we found some of it growing out of the back of some critter up in the mountains, and there's some other folk with none too good intentions who were hoarding a bunch of it in a dungeon down south. Well, that's really weird. Huh. I mean, not to be this guy, but I'm going to be inciting this. What the fuck are you inciting yet? <laughs> well, <laughs> name? I mean, if she's going to say, I'll let you go. But if she's going to say, if, if yeah. she's, sorry, <laughs> I'll let you go. No, yeah, no, no. Just no. let her fucking talk. <laughs> <laughs> Excuse my interruption. Please continue. Okay. Jesus. That was God. Jeppy thinking about what to say, not Nimsy measuring her words. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Anyway. Uh, Jesus. Fuck. Okay. <laughs> Damn you, Andy. <laughs> That's weird. I mean, they've been mining for a while, and we've been getting lumber like usual from Lonelywood, and, and our sacrifice has been just fine. I, huh. Wonder what's going on there. Well, it's probably for better, smarter people to know than me. I stay out of that kind of stuff. You know, you just hear about it in town. Well, what do you do around... Pardon me. My name's Jib. Nice to meet you. What do you do around this town? I work over at the Blue Clam there. I bake goods there. I sell my cookies. People like them. Mm cookies i'll have to try some while we're here at the mention of sacrifice i give sort of a side eye from beneath my mask and hood towards wink you both can roll history or arcana six that's a 16 arcana i mean honestly even on a six you wouldn't have a decent understanding of this all of the 10 towns on a near nightly or semi-nightly basis give sacrifices to oral in the form of humans food or warmth it is a practice that has gone on for quite some time among the Ten Towns. The sacrifice warmth? Everett, you would know that that means, based on what she said, you could probably glean that they're trading lumber for whatever gemstones with a nearby neighboring Ten Town. Maybe another fail barrage entity. And lumber would be the sacrifice they make for warmth. Mm-hmm. Can I still roll insight on her? Yeah, what would you like to know? Basically, I want to see if she's really as clueless as she seems as far as the mind goes. Sure. Okay, 25. It's not that she's clueless. She's just willfully ignorant and unaware. We did sort of just walk up to the first person we saw. 
Yeah, and it's one of those things where it's like, this is just the way ten towns operate. Mm. Life coldly and terribly goes on for people up in the north. On a 25, you would get, that's how people live their life here. Sorry, beg your pardon. What would what's doing over at the mine have to do with your trade with Lonelywood or your sacrifices? Well, I don't know all the details. You know, I just make cookies, but as far as I know, I think that's who we trade with. You said you're not from around here. Where are you all from? Maybe I can help you understand a little better. I'm from pretty far down south. I'm from a place called Norilu. It's the south, but not very far south. Still in the north. I am from far away as well. Give me a group persuasion roll. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. 19. That's a nine. I have a nine also. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah, that's, you know, that's not great. <laughs> Well, I'd be happy to share what I know, but I don't know. I mean, you're not really telling me much about where you're all from. I mean, we do have an open gate policy, and I do have an open oven policy. Anyone can come (laughs) get cookies, but it's a little weird. I understand. The only reason I'm not being specific is you've probably never heard of where I'm from. The Waterdeep area. Why don't you say so? You're not the first one to come here from the Waterdeep area. They love, love their macadamia nut cookies. Well... (laughs) That is a fair bit of weakness. A toasted macadamia is something of a delicacy. Two of you, come on. Where is it you said you uh, sell these cookies? Up at the uh, Blue Clam. As she says it, she points straight up ahead where you saw earlier in the distance more activity. So you could piece all that together to say the Blue Clam is probably the tavern. That may be where the speaker is if you wanted to go and speak to the speaker. Okay. They'd live up to their name probably and speak. All right. Well, maybe we'll see you around there later. We got a job to do here. What do you say? Onward to the mines? Indeed. All right. You've been very helpful, Nimsy. Thank you. Nimsy, do you suppose anyone's still at the mines this time of day? Oh, yeah. They work all day. They don't really stop till nightfall. Good to know. Then we'd best hurry, and perhaps we'll catch you around the clam later in the evening. Thank you, Nimsy. Thanks. Thank you. You too. Thanks. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's be going. I tip my straw hat and go along my way. Never thought we'd get to a place where Wink abruptly ended a conversation. <laughs> wow, I, I forget about that. We got them there. Part of Jib that really draws from that over polite Midwest Canadian, Wisconsin, Minnesota. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Yeah, it's the thank you, sorry culture. That was the whole thing. As opposed to the Northeast, where we're the fuck you, sorry culture. Yeah. Yes. Yikes. Jib, I would say you could piece together. It was you that rolled high, right? Yeah, my 21. Yeah. Yeah. Finally. It's rare for Jimmy. Let's reward him a little more. Yeah, we got to reward him with more detail, obviously. <laughs> I know every road in this town. I don't know how. I just do. You know everybody, too. Nimsy, that's your sister now all of a sudden. Right. Anyway, you'd piece together that as you saw those tents and encampments and the buildings becoming more and more sparse, that's probably the trailway towards the mine's entrance. So if you go straight back and then hang a right you would make it there. Is there anything the three of you would like to do, or do you want to just make way? Up to you. Can you remind us how we're being paid for this job? Is it a salary, or is it at the end of things? Because I would be looking for armors or weapon shops or that sort of thing. Is it, if it was something I knew I was going to like have some change for. Gotcha. What you remember of the contract being signed is that it's a relatively open-ended contract in terms of services rendered. Mm-hmm. And it was also open-ended in terms of we will pay you throughout the process of you rendering rather than in bulk at the end. Mm-hmm. Mm, yeah, I'm going to be on the lookout for any sort of weapons or armors a blacksmith anything like that you want to describe how you're going to make your way through town and i will let you know what you see and when you see it i guess we head straight for the mine the most direct Beautiful. route or the route that nimsy pointed us sure cool all right sweet as you get closer to where that activity is could the three of you make me an acrobatics check what are we doing to start yeah with? you'll see no 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 <laughs> like what is happening why are we making a oh. check should it be a saving throw what are we doing i guess it should be a save yeah make me a dex game okay okay 16 13 22 cool you all managed to step out of the way of a nearby drunkard who is violently vomiting all over the street okay Ooh, great job <sighs> charming take no damage damage he must be slip and fall or something. Acid damage from his vomit. <laughs> you see a destitute looking individual in an alleyway and he's just rambling about something to do with Oris and an election. And he's gone on about the sacrifices and all that. And he's just completely made a mess of himself. Ooh, Oris was the speaker, right? Yes, that is correct. Well, I don't want to talk to him. 
I mean, this guy. We'll probably talk to Oris later. Does he look like he's in need of medical attention? You can roll insight on that. <laughs> can I roll? Well. Yeah, medicine, actually, it seems yeah. appropriate. <laughs> either medicine or insight. There will be two different ways to resolve this. Okay. It's a nine either way. Sorry? It's a nine either way. Wait, is that also what you got? Wait. It's what Scala said, and it's the same for me. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Everett, insight or medicine, what do you got? I'll roll insight. If he's name dropping or it's I'll roll insight. That is a dirty 20. On the dirty 20, Everett, this is a typical afternoon for this individual. They're probably not in need of medical assistance, but you do note that they're heavily drunk and they've got their opinions and they're absolutely about to share them with the wall in front of them or anyone that walks by. Well, best to leave them to that, I think. What sort of place is this that lets a neighbor live like that? Uh, a cold place. You say that out loud, Wink? Yeah, I'd say <laughs> that to Jib in response to what he said. In a normal tone? You're not whispering or anything? No, I'm not whispering. No, been the north, have you? I love whatever this is. What gave it away? Was it Twang? You ever wonder who wouldn't be in this kind of state living up here in north? Not everybody seems in this state, but you seem to think there's a reason they should be. Yeah, you spend fucking 20 years up here and you see how you feel. Also, not everyone's fucked over by Fel Brosh. 20 years? That's all? I've been up here 170 years. Up here ain't the same for you, is it, you twerp? Oh, I'm from the north. <laughs> Which of the ten towns you from? Oh, well, not one of the ten towns. A little to the south. Yeah, and yeah. shut your fucking mouth, <laughs> ain't it? <laughs> oh, I love this guy. Sorry. sorry right, about. right, right, right. Take it, take it easy. Take I it easy. I didn't mean to offend. Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> you didn't mean to offend. Meanwhile, you're sitting here. you picking up... <laughs> Uh, picking all me's. I am really uncomfortable with how easy Jeppy did that. <laughs> Why don't you have a seat now? You look like you need to take it easy. This person collapses against the wall on the ground and is just looking up at you, narrowing their eyes, not happy. So how did Fail Barosh fuck you over? <sighs> well, I used to make the trek up Lonely Woods Way, and they fucking sold it off got rid of the union three of my friends died on the job you'd think they'd staff us back up but fuck me they wouldn't sorry everybody going on about a union explain to me like i ain't never heard of that so tash runs this union right all, all right it's the hell oh shit it's a un. i get this wrong every time i think it's the united oh, fuck me it's the United Band, yeah, your United Band of Winter Workers, U-B-O-W-W, because <laughs> that's what they say, you bow to no one is the thing of it, and they, they fucking love that shit. They love- The slogan, the slogan, they like the slogan. Right, but, yeah, you know, it's more than a slogan. I take it. Y'all y'all do something? What we talking about? You see he's starting to change the subject and forget what you're talking about. Roll persuasion. Okay, 14 persuasion. Oh, yeah, yeah, okay. That's it. It's because Phil Baroche has been trying to keep us overworked, underpaid. Tash, Tash is good people. She's there for us. The union made sure it didn't happen. But then, Fail himself figured it out. The way the contracts work, I don't fucking know. They they, they broke up the 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 the, uh, the 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 he sold off enough of his property so that he could get rid of the unions throughout, and that left us on the shit end of the stick. That's tragic, but I'm a union man. My you think fucking Oris would do anything about it? So worried about his election, winning against that other one there. That other one? Yeah, against Cyril. It was a tough election, but he won it. Probably no fucking thanks to that Phil Baroche. Mm. They're always getting in the way of shit. Oris won an election against Cyril. Uh huh. Mumbling but shaking his head in agreement. Right. And how long ago was that? Oh shit. <coughs> Struggles to burp again. <coughs> uh, it's probably a. Here you go. Take it easy there. Take it easy there, buddy. <laughs> we found a way for my burps to work. <laughs> we don't need to cut them anymore. Ah, I'm. Month, maybe two? I don't know. But 
While they're having this conversation, <laughs> if this is an aside alley, can I look out to the main thoroughfare and see if this is attracting any attention from anybody? This guy making a scene like this? You can roll perception, yeah. but I think you know the answer. <laughs> yeah, I think I do too. That's a 15. On a 15, you hear someone go, oh, there's Vernon at it again. Vernon. Vernon. But I told him I'm not even going to fucking go back to Lonelywood. And they can worry about that problem themselves. Oral comes and stomps us into oblivion. Give a fuck. Look, I don't know anything about any of this. I can just tell that you've been ill-treated. And I ain't got much in the way of anything to help you out. But there's some place for you to lay your head down? You got a home here? (laughs) That's a fucking good one, isn't it? Vernon lays down on the ground and closes his eyes. <laughs> all, right, all right, get up. Get up now. If y'all want to head over to the mine, I'm going to get Vernon up to the... They got rooms at the... I, I, I just I get the fucking hands off me, would you? Vernon's going to like get up and prop himself against the wall, wrestle himself from your grip, and just start making his way down the row to the activity, which again, you could probably guess is the tavern. Now wait, 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 wait just a minute. They got a room there you can spend the night in? I got plenty of rooms. I figure it out. I figure it out every day. How much do they charge you for something like that? Ten silver ought to do it. All right. I pluck a gold piece out of my <laughs> purse. You get yourself a room. That's about as much as I can do for you. It's actually, it's actually eleven silver. Look, I was born at night, but it weren't last night. I'm hoping they'll be sane enough not to let you spend this at the bar. But get yourself a room and sleep it off. Eh? You're a nice person. I'll be honest with you, I plan to buy one of Nimsy's cookies in addition to a room. Well, I can't fault you for that. Do take care of yourself now. Sorry I can't do more for you, Vernon. Nah, Vernon scuffles off. Why'd you help him like that? It's the neighborly thing to do. Sure, but we're not his neighbors. I feel that there's a certain way things work around here. I don't know. Maybe there is. Don't mean it's the right way. No, of course not. I don't know. Don't mind me. I don't know either. Maybe what I didn't want the right thing to do, but can't just see someone in a condition like that and have some small capability to help and then not. Yes, yeah, suppose you're right. Let's go see what's up with this mine. All right, we continue. All right. This company we're working for, I say as we're walking, Vetus, they're working for Fail Barosh? That's the way I understand it, sure. Looks like Fail Barosh is causing plenty of trouble. Seems that way. I don't like this business of dissolving the union. Not even sure how you'd go about doing such a thing. Listen to the two of you. Jib, do not be so quick to give up your instinct. We are here to do a job, not to fix the world and its problems. Yeah, yeah, you're right, I think. Let's get going, eh? Come. Way I see it, everybody's got a choice what work they take on at the end of the day. Sometimes that choice ain't much of a choice, I know, but I'm starting to get a bad feeling about all this, all I can say. Come. We will be losing the light soon. Just fucking cool, RP. Thank you, all three of you. That's awesome. All right, you make your way vomit-free. You're now starting to see the buildings are getting more dispersed from one another. Up ahead, you can clearly start to see the tents and the breakout open encampment-style buildings. But you do notice an armory on your right side. It's a pretty small, quaint armory. But you're welcome to check the wares and ask what they have and see what you want. Cool. I'll clock that, but I might save that until after we do this. All right, awesome. As you start to make your way into this tented area, you can't yet see a crew or anything, but I will ask you all to make a perception check. 16. 9. That is a 15. Awesome. All of you easily pass this one. You hear a large, large... A 15 and a 16, it is clearly an explosion of some sort, and it sounds like it has been muffled and dampened. And on the 16 and 15, you can start to hear up ahead yelling and panic noises. Wouldn't that just be our timing? (laughs) Once again, this seems so... Come. Don't need to tell me twice. Awesome. I presume you run towards the sound? Yes. Cool. (laughs) Uh, You will hang a left. As you make that left, you will clearly see the entrance to a mine, and you will see probably 10 or 12 people outside in a panic, and you'll see a dwarf barking orders clearly just from their body language. You can see that at some other people, you would be able to guess that the dwarf is probably Grant, the foreman of this operation. What orders exactly is he barking? Can we hear? Secure what's at the entrance. We gotta find someone to go back inside. You can't tell 
what the meaning behind it is, but you can make out at least those two things. Rat, what's going on here? I walk right up to this kerfuffle. Of course, of course Wink does. I mean, that's what Wink do. There's an emergency. What is it? Well, we heard some sort of loud noise coming from this direction, and it looks like y'all are in a frenzy. What's going on? It's a fucking cave-in. Didn't expect this. Someone blew shit up inside. I have a situation to deal with. You want to help? Well, we're here to investigate what's being done with all your wraithesite, so on the condition we help you, you'll give us whatever information you might have on that subject? Whoa, 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 whoa. You kind of calm someone running down, sends them off on their way, and then looks back to you. Who sent you again? We're with Vetus. Okay, makes sense. All right, I'll comply, but listen, you're going to help me. Like I said, we need help. Why don't you get in there? You help us rescue our people while you're in there. Look for whatever shit you want. Got nothing to hide, okay? Our operation's above board. But we got crew down there that needs help. Look, I may not be Andy, but I'm going to roll an insight check on that. I will <laughs> do that as well. Our shit is above board. We got nothing to hide. Often said by people with something to hide. 14 insight. On a 14, you'd imagine that it's just a proud foreman. You know, my shit's always above board. What you can tell is this is not someone with malicious intent, more so someone with pride in their operation. Okay. Mm -hmm. Guess you need all the help you... Everett, no shit. You don't want to do your fucking insight roll, too? I only got a 13. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, of course. Of course. You were were deliberating not telling me your old insight. No, I was was deliberating. (laughs) I was deliberating using knowledge, but... I'm going to save it. Sorry, I just, I had to know. I had to ask. I know, sorry. <laughs> Call me out. Go ahead. <laughs> anyway. What does the entrance of this mine look like right now? As Wink is talking to this guy, trying to figure it out. I want to see what's going on ahead of us. Yeah, what's ahead of you is a large mouth cavern. It goes up into a rocky hill. That's it. It's a cave mouth on the side of a hill. Inside, you can start to see some glimmer and glow from the inside of both red and gold. You could definitely tell that this is the mine where the Wraith site is being obtained. Okay. I strum my banjo, summon my dancing lights... <laughs> I mean, we just need, we need a moment. <laughs> this is a fucking cave and people are running in panic. You're like, better get out my banjo. Look, my arcane focus is a musical instrument. I'm a bard, okay? <laughs> I love it. It's just, no, 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 I'm more so praising that this is what D&D does. This is the situation D&D creates, <laughs> and it's a beautiful thing. <laughs> Dancing lights, and I head into the cave. Awesome. <laughs> I guess you need all the help you can get around here with your union dissolved. So let's get to it. Ooh. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> Fucking got Ooh. him. Cool. After your quip, anything else? Otherwise, you're walking in? I'm walking in. Awesome. Jib's walking in. All right. So at the mouth of the cave, you notice, you know, as, you, as you're as you walking in, you start to make your way towards that, uh, that glow I mentioned earlier. You see this resplendent red, shimmering gold. You notice it on the walls and on the floor uh, in the forms of stalactites and stalagmites. This cave is almost completely overrun with resources, at least at its headway there. There's only a singular pathway, but as you make your way down, Wink, you notice that your dancing lights are very useful, but pretty soon you see tons of open flames and you see, you probably haven't maybe seen them maybe in water deep, but you see like light fixtures strung up along the walls as well. Just to speak plainly, it's just, it's electricity. It gets light bulbs. So you see those and you don't need your dancing lights. This place is very well lit throughout. You can go ahead and make me a perception roll outside of that and I'll explain kind of this entry room that you're in. Net 20. Seven. No, five. Great. On a nat 20, you taste the salt of the side of the wall. It's malachite. No, I'm just kidding. Is malachite a type of rock? Malachite. Yeah, it is. Okay, cool. Thanks, yes. Thank you, ninth grade geology. Thank you, Steven Universe. I went to summer school for that shit. I was very bad at that class. Anyway, on that roll, you see a couple of benches in this circular seeming room. Other than that, you see a passageway straight in front of you and one to your right. The one to your right, you see, leads off into a more open room. The one to your left, as best you can tell on a nat 20, you can't see too much of it, but you can tell it is probably a network of tunnels that take you to various places in the mines. Do we, like, see smoke or still hear anything? We walked into this cave. You can hear the sounds of panic from within, but from where you're at, you don't see smoke coming from the right. From straight ahead of you, it's hard to say because there's less light in the tunnel system. You can't really tell if there's like smoke or rubble or anything up ahead. 
Okay. I'm going to go far enough forward so that, at least with my dark vision, I can see anything else about the way forward. I'll follow closely behind Jib, and at level three, I now also have dark vision. I will also follow with my dancing lights illuminating as need be, but if there are more of these strange light fixtures... When you get into the tunnel, not so much. Okay, then I'll keep my dancing lights orbiting. Sweet. With that and the dancing lights ahead of you, you can make out that eventually you'll see a left and a right path. You'll see a path in front of you. With that dark vision, you can see 60 feet in front of you, another set of branching paths. It's very plain at this point that this is probably some sort of vast network where it would be really easy to get lost. And if you maybe had more familiarity here or a map, you might be able to make your way through these tunnels, but You could try, and it might get you to the heart of this mining operation faster. Do we hear any noises or anything? You continue to hear the sound of cries for help in the distance. Is there a directionality to them? Yes, there is definitely directionality to them. From where you are, it would be on... I'm going to use the clock. Wait, no. It would be your, like, 1.30 p.m. is the directionality of the the noises. (laughs) Why is it PM? <laughs> Wait, what did you just say, Andy? Because all I see is you putting your hand in the, your head in your hand. I didn't say anything, but Jimmy... <laughs> I said, yeah. why is it oh, PM? Oh, yeah, I don't know why it's PM. That's a great question. <laughs> oh, <laughs> it's one thirty. <laughs> it doesn't matter, PM or AM. It's totally not important to the directionality of the noises. So slightly to the to right, the right and ahead. telling me. Yes. Okay, then the right path it is. I don't know, man. A clock felt right to help you. (laughs) That's fine. I think at this point we're just following the noises, right? (laughs) Yes. That sounds good. So you'll just keep going straight and occasionally hitting right turns as you go down this network? Towards the noises. Towards the noises. Great. All right. Why don't we roll some survival checks? I can tell that there was a map in that other room, but we headed right into the <laughs> There may have been a lot in some of those other rooms, but... Uh... <laughs> People are in danger. We can't be fiddling around. Yeah, you sort of gave us this sense that this was urgent, and then it's like, oh, here's all this shit you can look at first. Yeah, yeah, totally. Well, that, that's, uh, yeah. <laughs> like a fucking speedrunner. Save it for tables. You guys can definitely... You all can speedrun the shit out of this dungeon if you want to. 16. Do, 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 do. 14. 17. Awesome. It's a great start to this. Sweet. You make your way in that direction. You pop out. You've definitely made some progress. The sounds of anguish and cries for help are getting louder. And as you pop out, you come across a bunk area. You can come out here if you want to go ahead and check it out, or you can keep going down the tunnels, but you definitely have not reached your destination just yet. People are in trouble. We uh, have no time to stop here. (laughs) (laughs) Sounds like we're getting closer, at least. Unless there's anything of immediate interest to me in this room. (laughs) I see no reason to stay here. (laughs) Wink subtly asks the DM. Maybe we can loot all these rooms on our way back. All right, let's do another round of survival checks as you head back to the tunnels to keep towards the sound. Jeppy's really learning his lesson with this one. One. Ooh. Nineteen. Fifteen. Okay. That ain't gonna do it. Thanks, Jib. You all want to make me a round of perception checks, please. 10. 7. 25. Excellent. You poke out of the tunnel system again. This time you see a dining hall area. But what you also see is a large hole in the ceiling cracked open, probably from this explosion because you are getting closer. But you also see a group of kobolds ransacking this room. And they notice you immediately stepping out of the mouth and they draw their little kobold weapons and start to make their way towards you you see five of them oh doesn't have to be like this let's go ahead and roll initiative so they're, they're drawing <laughs> weapons i i think this is a combat <laughs> this smells suspiciously like it might be combat related uh, i was waiting cool. to see what jeppy's kobold voice was gonna be okay maybe you will <laughs> That's an 18. 19. That's a 16. Okay. Most of them rolled like total ass. Wink, what would you like to do as you see these pesky critters making their way towards you? At least three of them seem to be charging towards you with the dagger in hand. The fourth and fifth are looking at all of you with ill intent. They may fire a slingshot at you. You don't know until their very shit initiative order comes up. Let me just give you a little sense of the physical space that you're in. It would probably be from where the tunnel spits out to the dining area 
to the other side, 20 feet. You'd be able to get there if you wanted to go right into melee range. Yeah, how far apart from one another are they? They're bunched up. So theoretically, I could get a number of them in a thunder wave. You'd be able to pop three of them with a well-placed thunder wave. Okay, then I shall position myself to place well a thunder wave and cast it. Con saves from as many of them as I can hit, please. Cool, let me just see what their not good con modifier is. Great, it's almost like I didn't expect a thunder wave to be part of this combat. First one rolled an 18, second one rolled a 15. Third one rolled a 16. Jesus. One rolled a zero. I'm going to roll for all five and I'll just give you pick. Is that cool? Because I just started rolling. Otherwise, I take the first three and they all pass. Take the first three. They all fucking passed. Oh, not great con <laughs> saves. All of them can beat a 14, apparently. <laughs> they take four points of thunder okay. damage. Stop saving against my spells. This is like five rolls in a row, you piece of shit. <laughs> Stop it. Well, if you had hit the fourth, it would have gotten a zero because it rolled a nat one. <laughs> well, I didn't. I That's not what happened. <laughs> I'm sorry. All right, cool. You hit three of them for four damage. That is Wink's turn. Jib. All right. Jib is going to spring into action and try to skewer the one that's at the front of the pack. Awesome. With his saber. That's a 13 to hit. Oh my god, it just misses. Oh man. Boo. Boo. All right. All right. Well, he's a level three fighter, so (laughs) that's my turn. (laughs) Cool, cool. (laughs) I am going to end my turn within five feet of Wink, though. Wink, you didn't take any movement last turn, did you? I positioned myself so that I could thunder wave at these kobolds. I'm assuming some movement would be required to do that, but I don't know exactly what that would be. You would have moved to the end of the tunnel and maybe to the left or right so you're not at melee range with them. So, Jib, easy enough for you to do that, but it would be able to take an AOO against you if you move back towards Wink. That is a great point. I'll take that AOO. Okay. Right. It rolled a 12. I'm assuming that misses, right? That misses. Cool. All right. It whiffs with the dagger. That is Jib's turn. We go to my favorite of the kobolds. Kobold number five. The best one. Most fleshed out character. It'll say... And it'll ready its slingshot at Wink, because it saw Wink come for its friends. It's feeling mighty threatened. It will go boop, and let's see. 19 probably does hit, right? I feel like a fucking bully. I just want you to know I don't like this either. No, it's okay. (laughs) I will say that the slingshot doesn't do a lot of damage. So that's five bludgeoning damage? Yeah, bludgeoning damage. Okay. Cool. Everett. Okay. This entire room is pretty well lit. Yes. Okay. I'm going to stay in this entryway then, and I draw my longbow, and I'm going to take a shot at the one that Jib attacked. Yep. Got you. And I roll a 16 to hit. That'll do. And now with my dread ambusher feature as a gloom stalker, I deal an additional weapon die on my first attack of a combat. And so this is 16 points of piercing damage. You send this thing to another fucking planet. Please tell us a tale (laughs) of how poor kobold number one came to fall in Icewind Dale. Just... Very coldly, I draw my longbow, I crouch against the wall of this cavern entrance, and without missing a beat, just as this kobold takes its attack at Jib, I fire in that moment of surprise and strike it through the chest. It reaches for Jib with its dagger, whiffing the attack, looking back to you, seeing an arrow greeting its gaze. Oh no! And then gone. Oh, <laughs> yes. That kobold has been deleted from the monster <laughs> manual. It doesn't even have a stat block ever again. It is so dead. And now... Oh, there's more. Also part of Dread Ambusher, I get an extra attack. Great. That I will make now. Seems like a good time to do it. <laughs> <laughs> On one of the ones that was also <laughs> Thunderwave. Awesome. I roll that and I roll a 15. Hits. Yes. Okay, this one doesn't get the extra damage, but this is still seven points of piercing damage. Awesome. That is a very effective turn from Everett. We move now to the one that you just attacked. You said you didn't change your position, right? I'm still in the tunnel entryway that we came from. Yeah, so you stayed there. This one's out for vengeance. It's coming right after you, and it's going to make a melee attack against you, Everett. Does it have to pass us to do that? I would say probably it comes into your range, Wink, but maybe not yours, Jib. It's all right. I have another reaction. I have a different thing I can do. Sure. I will take an attack of opportunity as it runs up. 
24 to hit? Yeah. Do you need to ask? That shouldn't have a question mark inflection at the end. That should have a period inflection or an exclamation point. Okay, here's a period inflection. 10 points of piercing damage. Awesome. It makes its way towards you, Everett. Dagger in hand, ready to strike. And a thin little blade just kind of goes through its head. And I think through its head anyway. You don't know yet until Wink says. But Wink, please tell us a tale of how Kobold number two came to fall in Icewind Dale. Wink sees Kobold number two (laughs) charging towards the door. They quickly shift their banjo that they cast their thunder wave from over to their offhand and they draw their rapier and just jab it over into Kobold 2, sort of clotheslining it as it runs for Everett. So it just kind of runs right over the sword and its body keeps running a bit as its head falls off behind it. Beautiful. (laughs) Yikes. Beautiful. It's great. Great. Kobold number four is up next. Kobold number two's turn cut short at the neck. (laughs) Kobold number four is still going to go for Everett, even though Wink just (laughs) decapitated his friend. Kobold number four was very close to that arrow and is feeling quite threatened. And it's going to use its slingshot, so it's just going to attack from a distance. That is going to be a 16. Does that hit? Yes. Awesome. And that is... Max damage, six points of bludgeoning damage to you, Everett. All right, that is kobold number four's turn. We move now to the last alive kobold in the initiative order, which is three. And that one, not making the same mistake as its friend, (laughs) is going to go for the closest adversary, which is Jib, with its dagger. And that is a 15 to hit. Fuck off. 15 hits? Oh, okay. (laughs) Was that Jib saying fuck off? Jib's incapable. Hey, fuck off. (laughs) I think Jib is quite capable. As he smashes his natty light can on his head. (laughs) (laughs) Yes. This is college era Jib. Yeah, and I smash this kobold away with my shield. Beautiful. Just knock him away. Sweet. Back at the top with Wink. Okay. I'm going to run out from behind Jib over around the other side of this kobold that ran up to attack him. And Rapier still in hand. I will make an attack. 18 to hit. Ought to do. Nice. Okay. Make sure I put a full stop on that so you wouldn't chide no, me. No chiding. Okay. Eight points of piercing damage. Awesome. This was the one that attacked Jib, correct? Jib, yes. Cool. That one is looking very hurt. And then as a bonus action, I will impart some bardic inspiration. Yes! I was hoping to get some of this shit. Here we go. (laughs) On to (laughs) Jib. Now I feel like I'm gonna I'm gonna let you down. Let me see, what would I sing in this situation? Oh, I got this one good jib, you take it on home. Can do. And you can add this bardic inspiration die, because I am now a Valor Bard, you can add it to your weapon damage. Or if you don't feel like you need that, you can also add it to your armor class against an attack. Shit, oh, fucking wow. insane. Fucking Valor Bards. That's what? pretty good. So cool. Valor Bards. Badass stuff. I picked the wrong fucking subclass for Ravnica, let me tell you. I just had to go with what my character <laughs> would want to do. Stupid. Anyway. Awesome. That is Wink's turn. And, oh, just in time, Jim. All right. This is with advantage because we're flanking this guy, right? Now you are. Correct. Correct. Okay. Yes. <laughs> we're fucking kobold with barely any health left. <laughs> yeah. I always feel bad not using the uh, bardic, but that's a 24 well, to hit. Well, you still can. It's... I don't need <laughs> no, it. No, you still can use it on your damage save it. if you want. Oh, and the damage. Right. Yeah, that's an option. Va, 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 valor bard. Right. I didn't even process that. Right. Okay. The valor bard. Okay. Then I guess I will. I'll end this kobold right now. Probably. Probably. <laughs> Yeah, I'm gonna... Oh my... Okay, that's five points of piercing damage. Wait, that's it? I rolled a one on the D8 and a one on the D6. (laughs) Oh my god. Oh no! So it had four health left, but I almost want to just make it have six to punish you for two nat ones. However, Jib, please tell the tale of how this kobold barely fell in Icewind Dale. I feel so inspired by Wink's (laughs) song and the inspiration. I lunge forward with my sword, and it doesn't quite reach. And then I just kind of stumble, and my sword goes the rest of the way through this kobold's face. I really thought you you sneeze, and it gives you the little bit of distance you need in one. (laughs) (laughs) That's good, too. Awesome. That is 
the end of Kobold number three. We go back to one of the distance ones, keeping it going on Everett. It rolled a fucking nat one, Everett, so you're safe from the potential six damage that it could have done to you. I just duck my head back behind the wall. No, this thing fucking shot in the wrong direction. You didn't duck it all. <laughs> <laughs> it shot its now dead friend on accident. <laughs> Uh, the, the pebble finds the eye socket of the newly dead kobold. And that is its turn. Everett, your turn again. I'm going to shoot back at him. Duck back out of the entryway, and uh, <laughs> here I go. You know, some combats you design to present the challenge, and others, it's for potential entertainment. I think this might be the latter. That is a dirty 20. Yeah, this is for the latter. Go ahead and roll the damage. Here I go. That's 10 points of piercing damage. Awesome. It reels back in quite a lot of pain from that blow. You did a number on it. And I'm going to back up a little ways if I can get out of range of that, back into the way we came. Let me see what its range is. Its range is 120 feet. A disadvantage past 30. Yeah, that's what the slash means. That's it. Yep. So it's a disadvantage if you want to back up a little more. I use my full movement to back up back into the tunnel. Beautiful. It'll be a disadvantage if it comes at you. Awesome. I skulk into the shadows. Of course you do. You got to do it cool. <laughs> Cobalt number four is going to go at Jib with the slingshot. Staying at a distance. That is a 16 to hit. Dink. Fuck. Off the shield. Awesome. Okay. Wink. See you again. Against our very formidable foes. Have either of these been injured? One of them just got shot by Everett, but neither of these were hit by your Thunder Wave initially. Okay. Then I'll move towards the injured one and... Just make a melee attack. Sweet. Ten probably doesn't do it. No, it does not. So I miss. All right. If that is your turn, then we'll go to Jib. Do you want to do something else? I'm considering... I think I'll save the rest of my inspiration. I don't feel like we need it for this combat, but maybe I'll be proven wrong. What clued you to that? <laughs> <laughs> That's fair. I would probably do the same if I were playing a bard against five dipshit kobolds. Jib, your turn. All right. I'm going to run up and flank the one that Wink just attacked. Let's do. And... 14 to hit. Just hits. Just hits. Only the hits. Six piercing damage. Awesome. This thing is very wounded. You feel like if you had gotten a bardic inspiration damage and a regular damage and rolled them both shittily, you might kill it. Mm. Wait, what are you, why are you flipping me off? <laughs> I'm making fun of Jimmy's bad roll from earlier. Oh, I thought you were being like, ah, see, you, you should have given out your bardic inspiration. It did I sound like, like that. No, yeah, I totally... Yeah, that's fair. No, I was referring to, like, if you roll two ones again, it probably just... That's how hurt it looks. Okay. Oh, well, then maybe I'll action surge and hit it again. Yes. There he is. Here it goes. That's another 14, Hits again. miraculously. Okay. Okay, and that's another 10 piercing damage. Jib, wailing into it once, hitting it, seeing it on death's door, wailing into it again. Please tell a tale of how Kobold number five came to fall in Icewind Dale. I... Uh, just slice him up with my sword. It's pretty routine at this point. Yeah, why stand on ceremony about it? Let's just kill this thing and move the fuck on, right? Let's do it. Yeah. You know, anyone who knows me knows that I advocate for goblin rights, and I think it's barbaric Kobolds to- are adjacent. Yeah, no, oh. I- No. I will fuck oh, up some oh, oh. I thought you were saying like- So, fuck them. Okay. Jimmy's not gonna be put in any other direction on this one. Everett, go ahead and make Jimmy proud if you want to try and fuck up this last kobold. Let's do it. I will try. Here I go. From way back- from way back <laughs> to the rafters. Gentles all. Look at him go. Everett. <laughs> that's a 19 hit. <laughs> yeah, it hits. And that's 11 piercing damage. Lots of dammies on it. Looking hurt. Awesome. That is its turn. It is going to... Better run. No, it's not going to do that. Right. It, this thing wants a fucking meal. And it's seeing some leftover food scraps on that dining table. And it sees Wink in the way. Going to make a melee attack with the dagger on you, Wink. With disadvantage because of my protection fighting style. Oh, shit. Whoa. Okay. Dang. All right. I fling my shield out into the way. It ain't going to probably hit then. I'm assuming a 12 does not do it. It does not. All right. That is its turn. It gulps very loudly, pretty much knowing what's in store for it. As we go back to the top of the order, <laughs> no way this poor cobalt can survive the gauntlet of our heroes going all at one order. Wink, start us off, see how this fares for cobalt four. Y'all can drop your weapons and surrender. <laughs> Y'all gonna do that for me? No, I want my meal! <sighs> well, I'm sorry, this has gotta happen, man. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, shit. 14 to hit. It hits. 
seven points of piercing damage. This thing almost losing its appetite because it is just at death's door. Jib, what kind of food is on the table? <laughs> Jib turns around. <laughs> You see, like, haunches of, like, turkey leg and ham and just, like, very, like, worker stuff. Like, if this were be to be akin to, like, a modern-day firehouse, you know what I mean? Just, like, protein okay. is not a... It's pretty pretty good for worker stuff. Yeah, it, it's, it's not bad. Yeah. Turkey legs and ham. It's a hearty food for hearty folk. All right. Well, this is the food you want right here? This food here? Yeah! All right, I'm going to grab a ham hock and just throw it at him as an improvised weapon. <laughs> Roll, a tag. Roll a tag with your typical... I'm going to make you proficient in ham hock, so roll it with proficiency. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so that would be dex, dex and proficiency, because sure. I'm throwing it, or is it strength, do you think? You're very familiar with food. You eat it all the time. I do. Whatever you want. All right, I'm just going to roll. That's a 22 to hit. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Go ahead and roll damage. I think, uh, describe the ham hock, and I'll tell you what dice you get to roll for this thing. No, you describe the ham hock. What do you think? Oh, yeah, it's a holiday ham. It's a D8, actually, and you're going to add your mod to this thing. What? <laughs> These poor fucking miners apparently have a whole holiday <laughs> ham. What is happening right now? <laughs> Uh, not what, Jeffy, but these why. explanations know, man. are so unhinged because it's Icewood Dale. Is it just oh always Christmas God. or something? <laughs> is it like fucking uh, Whoville? This dining room. What the fuck is going on? Jimmy, throw this fucking ham and let's get on with the campaign. Jesus Christ. <laughs> Am I adding anything to this? <laughs> I don't care. It has two health. It's just a matter of how hard you kill it. Well, I rolled a five on the D8. Describe this death. Uh, Tell me a tale of how Cobalt 4 fell in Icewind Dale. All right. This Cobalt looks at this ham that I'm holding with huge eyes. (laughs) There's hunger behind his eyes. and So much hunger. It's insane. Jib, in a fit of rage, just shot puts this ham directly into the face of this kobold who attempts to open his mouth and catch it, try to eat it, but it... And its arms, it extends its yeah. arms. Nah, it just it fucking hits him right in the jaw. He's knocked back. Fucking jaw detached. Breaks his neck, probably. A D8 worth of ham. Just right in the face. I'm sorry, I'm still imagining... The roast beast. Oh, this is oh a my God. cringe who stole Christmas is lodged in this oh my face God. throat. Wow. Okay. Thank you. As the ham claps to the ground, we exit our mission. Apparently, okay. that's the best oh. one-handed bludgeoning weapon in Dungeons & Dragons. We found it. <laughs> apparently. Well, yeah. That's a D8. Um, you know. Roll Arcana. It's a magic weapon. <laughs> Plus two. No, it's a regular <laughs> ham. There's no magic. Okay. See, I would have thought it was a D4, like a yeah. light hammer, if we're going to give it a weapon stat, but it, you know. We really... were deep into farce at that point, so I figured, who the fuck cares about this? <laughs> Let's, I just need to make sure this thing dies from the ham. That's my only goal. And a 1D8 it was. The ham crumples. Right. So it is an unusable weapon for the remainder of the campaign. Okay? It shatters into ham okay. bits. I'm not, I was going to keep know, it. I, it but, I just okay. did the math of like, shit, anyone could pick this up and have a really useful 1D8 weapon for the rest of the campaign. <laughs> the ham shatters into like little ham bits and it is no longer usable as a weapon. Oh, lost myself there for a moment. Oh. I keep telling myself whenever something funny happens, that's probably the last fun moment of levity in this campaign. And I keep being wrong. And it's great. No. <laughs> You're <laughs> What's wrong, Andy? It's, it's the ham doing 1d8. I can tell it's still bothering him. You're mine. <laughs> I just... What? I mean, I won't lie. It bothers me a little. A ham shouldn't feasibly do 1d8 damage, but... That's very true. Yeah. It shouldn't do 1d8. But I think part of us is all glad it did. It should be 1d4 honestly. Everett walks back into the room from the tunnel. Is that a fucking ham? I'm gonna cast Cure... No! No! (laughs) Don't say it! I'm gonna cast Cure Wounds at level 2. I almost said Cure Moderate Wounds. (laughs) I thought you were gonna say Cure Ham. Cure Ham. (laughs) No. (laughs) (laughs) I'm done. I almost said Cure Moderate Wounds because that's what it was called in Pathfinder, but... Anyway, wow. 
Jeez, a one and a two on those D eights. Glad I upcast that oh, shit. Oh man, mm. oof, man, that stinks. I'm gonna investigate the bodies of these kobolds. Well, go ahead and roll investigation. I got a fifteen. Cool. On a 15, you see a dagger and a slingshot on all of them and not much else. The ones that were closer and in melee range have, like, scraps of food on their face. Okay. Do these daggers just look like normal daggers or... Run-of-the-mill shit. They have not fashioned these daggers out of Wraith of Sight that they found in the mines. If that's what you were wondering, that is not what you're seeing. No, I was just sort of wondering if it looks like forged blades or sort of improvised kobold daggers. That's the exact word I was going to use to describe. Yeah, all of their weaponry and clothing is improvised. Okay. They just had five iron daggers. That's like, yeah. oh, okay, I'm going to pocket those, but never mind. Yeah. We're back in gritty realism now that the ham episode is over. Yeah, the ham, the ham is, has left us... Kobolds are very, you know, it's a rough life. I heard five daggers, and I just had a flashback of Skyrim, where you just make a hundred daggers at a rip, and then you just sell them back to the, to the blacksmith. Mm-hmm. Or drop them all in your house. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and you have to walk one mile a year fast or slow to get to your house, because you're over-encumbered. I am sort of wondering, would I be able to tell how commonplace kobolds are in this area? I guess history, maybe, or nature, maybe, would be the best ways to go about that. I got a 10 on either. Only an 8. What color are their scales? They're brown scales, and you would probably believe that these are just... They're relatively common, and what's more common is that they seek places like this for refuge from the cold. Okay. Do we still hear the cries for help? Yeah, yeah, those are still happening. Less than 30 seconds later? Yeah, I'd hope so. (laughs) So you're in this dining room. I'll just tell you what you see around you. There are two doors on either lengthwise side of the room. So the north and the south side, you came in from a hole in the wall on the west side of this room. Up north is the direction of where the cries are coming from. So you could just go that way, or you could go back into the tunnels and keep heading up and more to that right, to that 1.30 p.m. clock direction. Towards the screaming. Towards the cries for help. Screaming, anguish. Yeah. Yes. Plan A. You have a choice. You can go back to the tunnels to keep making your way that way, or you can go straight ahead. And I will say this, you can tell that the screaming is not coming from the next room over. So you probably have some more rooms to navigate before you get there. I think I would still go through the rooms. That makes sense. Yeah, you don't want to do another survival check and fight five more idiotic kobolds? There may not be <laughs> ham next time. What? <laughs> I, I mean, no. <laughs> <laughs> All right, cool. So you want to just keep going then, straight ahead. Out the north exit. All players. Yes. Head that direction. Wink, you lead the charge. Uh, Wink stands behind Jib, but encourages Jib to go that way. All right, Skipper. Let's go. (laughs) Is that the Noralu word for partner? Well, it's kind of like the Noralu word for boss. I would never want to be confused for someone's boss. Well, I'm aware of that. Just taking orders from you right now. Because it seems like a good idea. Let's not dwell on it. Cool. And I charge forward with my shield forward. (laughs) (laughs) Wait, I want to talk more about our regional language inconsistencies that I follow. (laughs) Oh, my God. Wink lagging behind as they ponder advanced linguistics. And everyone else, including Wink, can go ahead and roll me perception as we walk into the next room. 22 on a natural 20. 13. 15. Chef's kiss to the 22 and all rolls. All are great. You are clearly in an office, kind of a square-shaped room. You see a desk. There is nothing on the desk, but you could certainly rifle around in it. It's an office, I will say, on a 22. You also see a couple of like chairs situated in the corner. You would reasonably guess it's probably the only office down here, and it probably belongs to the foreman. Is there a way out of this room other than the way we just came in? Yep. Oh, sorry. Yeah, that'd be a really easy thing for you to see on the 22. My apologies. Another door. To the north. And it sounds like... I, I'll say this, actually, because you rolled a 22 here and you've been rolling pretty well throughout. At this point, I think you've seen enough of this mine to know that basically the way this works is you head to the right and then you just go up through these different rooms to get to the back area where this cave-in has happened. The tunnel network is a means to circumnavigate all those rooms. Probably something that the workers take on their way in, and they probably head back down this way on their way out. You could probably put all that together just from the way that you're seeing all these rooms meet up with the tunnel as you're going up the tunnel. Mm. So basically, as you come across these rooms, it'll just be a straight path into the next room. Okay, and that path leads towards where the cries for help are coming from? Continuously and consistently they have so far, yes. Okay, then that is our priority. 
All right, cool. Hey, look, I'm giving you new information. I'm not going to make any assumptions about what you want to do with it. Assume that no circumstance will change that unless it is immediate and obvious to us. Like five cold balls in a hockey yeah, hand. Exactly. exactly. Put that fucking on a t-shirt. I hope that's okay, me speaking for the group there. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. I want to make sure that Everett, Everett is the most prone to want to investigate shit. Everett is taking mental notes of all of this, okay, make cool. no mistake, especially the office. Oh yeah, a fucking course. Where he will probably come back to and root around before going back to the foreman. That's what's going through Everett's mind. Also, barring a woman tied to a stake... No, we're going. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, okay, cool. (laughs) Cool. All right, I just want to make sure. Again, I don't want to discredit the fact that there is stuff here to check out. I don't want to force all of you into a path that you don't want to do. So if you're just going to keep going, let's assume you go to the next room. Entirely reasonable. (laughs) So weak. (laughs) Just knowing this is some real table talk shit, and not to get derailed, but just knowing Jeppy's mind... This is exactly the, we have an immediate objective, but in a video game, that objective is not halted in real time for when the player character loots every single crate in the dungeon. This is not so, that. Oh God. <laughs> I, uh, we're listening to people screaming yeah. in agony as we're like rifling through a yeah. desk. <laughs> I almost like, oh, God, I want to tell you how some of this... I'm sorry to put you on blast (laughs) like this. No, uh, you're not putting me on blast. So the funny thing is... uh, Do not tell us the mechanics. Do not. Okay, great. Cool. Then I won't. Awesome. Excellent. You go to the next room. Shields up. Let's go. Aye, aye, Captain. (laughs) As you enter the next room, it is very large. Very large indeed. Let's go ahead and do a round of perception checks to see what each of you glean as you look around this space. 17. 7 minus the team. A 19. Awesome. On a 7, you hear that you are quite close to the cries of anguish now. Probably one room away. And that is pretty cool stuff. On the 17 and on the 19, you can tell that the room you're in is a network of minecarts. They're probably regularly hauled with what's being mined over in the next room. Right now, as it stands, those minecarts are in a state of disarray. Like, they're all on their tracks, but they're either going to need to be moved or you're going to need to find some levers to get them to move around. Right now, with the way that this room is configured, there are a variety of minecarts that are just, like, standing in your way. Some are empty, some are full of wraithesite, some are full of ores and stones and coal and discarded shit. On the 19, to the right side, you notice a lever and a symbol above it, but you can't quite make out that symbol. You also notice to your left another lever and a different symbol, but you can't make out that symbol. Otherwise, you see probably about 10 minecarts total, at least three, maybe more, that are directly in your way right now that need to either be moved by force or by some sort of mechanism. Are there any in the way of me getting closer to either of these levers so I can see what those symbols are? The two levers that you can see, you can reach them without any checks or anything. You just fuck over and you can try and pull them for sure. I just want to go get close enough to see what either symbol is. Sure. Which one would you like to go first, left or right? They're about the same ways away? Yeah, from distance. Okay, I'll go left. Cool. To the left... I see something over here. To the left, you see a symbol. The lever is like right near the wall. And on the wall, you see a symbol of a tree. And the tree, its branches are bare. Winter, I would guess. I point towards the other one, and that's one. What does that look like? What does it look like? Wink, you're walking up? Sure. Yeah, yeah, we're looking at it. You see this emblem, and this one is also a tree. And its branches are not bare, but the amount of leaves on them is minimal. There's like a few leaves. Yeah, it's a few leaves. Mm. And you see like one's falling. Okay, so that would be autumn as seasons go. All right, so far that's all you've been able to see with the amount of surveying you've done at this area of the room. You can probably make it a quarter of the way through the room before you will be blocked by a track with a cart on it. So the wall that these levers are along, right, is there any path that leads another way or... Now that you're kind of walking a little bit more into this room, I'll explain a little bit of what else you're able to see and sort of how you're able to navigate to where you can get to in the room. Where you entered, you can walk freely, but as you would get further into the room, there are going to be holes in the ground that go pretty deep, and those are where those tracks run with those minecarts. So you can't just walk across the entire room. At some point, these stuck trains are going to be in your way, because then there'll just be a gap in the floor. So you can walk freely in the first quarter of this room. Two of the levers are accessible right now. As you get to the quarterway mark and you come across that first train cart area that is blocking you, another two levers in the distance. But 
unless you mess around with one of those levers or physically push this cart. Yeah, and I see what this is. I pull the fall lever to see what it does. Awesome. <laughs> cool, cool. Well, that was rather rash. Don't you want to look at the carts anymore? Well, all I see that's going on with these carts is that they're in our way. Maybe these mechanisms can move some of them out of our way. All right. You hear some mechanical noises, and you can hear in the distance and see some movement of a cart being moved further out back. In the distance? Further back in the room. Okay. Basically, you didn't move the one you wanted to. Okay. I throw the winter lever. Beautiful. I figured you would. Cool. So here's what happens when you do that. Puzzle success sound and the correct minecart moves. However, the lever that you just pulled snaps back into place and the cart above, you hear noise again, seemingly having reset what you did to the other one. Okay. However, you are now able to access the second half of this room. Mm. I see what Wink just did. I go back to the fall lever. I wait there and I say, Very wise, Wink. You go forward towards the others in the distance and tell me when I should pull this one. All right. Sounds like a plan. I go to the other two levers. Awesome. I bet you can guess what the other two look like, but I will describe them for you. One is a tree full of leaves, fully in bloom. The other one is a tree with most of its leaves and flowers springing up underneath it. Okay. I pull the spring lever. Nicely done. You would have seen the next cart in your way makes its way down the track and the next bit of this room is opened up to you. And you see in front of you, make me a perception check at this point. Okay. Seven. Okay, yeah. On a seven, your ears just ain't working too good today, Wink. Looks like it's going to be guesswork. Okay. So the cart's immediately blocking my path are out of it, right? Correct. Correct. So winter. So I pulled the winter lever. I pulled the spring lever. I go pull the summer lever. Okay. You pull the summer lever. The one that you just pulled now blocks your path again. Everett, you try throwing that fall lever. See what happens. I hear them say that. Did I also catch if the winter lever reset or not? The winter lever did not reset. The spring one was undone. The one that Wink just pulled was undone when Wink pulled summer. So winter is active and summer is active. Spring got reset. All right. And I pull the fall lever. So just to recap, the summer was active when you did that? Yes. yes. Okay, cool. Winter now resets, and all of the levers spring back into their original place. Wink, you are basically trapped between the two. I don't know where the fuck Jib is. Let's just assume Jib's with Everett. <laughs> and the two of you are in the beginning of this area. <laughs> Jib's just kind of watching from near where we walked into this chamber, completely not understanding the puzzle. Jib, pull the first lever, please, or we shall be here all night. Which one's the first one? I point back to the winter one. Winter? All right. I pull the winter lever. Jeppy. Uh, the thing that happened before happens again. You have to say that. Oh, okay. <laughs> You're the DM. <laughs> please. <laughs> the puzzle reset, basically, so I assumed you all, yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, got it. What's next? Hmm. I'm going to try throwing the summer lever again, now that the winter lever is pulled. Okay. You do that. The winter lever gets undone this time. Okay. Are there still people audibly yelling? Yeah, they're definitely in trouble. <laughs> Start <laughs> okay. Going. Um, this is a sound design nightmare. All right. Distant screaming while we're solving this puzzle. <laughs> So if I pull the spring lever, what happens? Well, the puzzle has been reset. So you're saying pull the spring lever first? The entire puzzle has been reset when I pull the summer lever? Jib pushed winter. Then you pushed summer and it undid winter. So effectively, yeah, you were only one step into the puzzle. So yeah, it reset. Okay. From neutral, I pull the spring lever. When you pull the spring lever, the one in front of you moves open. But the one behind you, which has Jib and Everett behind it, doesn't move. But your way forward is open. Okay. And there are no other levers in front of you beyond the spot. So it's just the four of the seasons that you can tell. Spring, you can access spring and summer. They can access winter and fall from where they are. But are there more mine carts in front of me? There are two more in front of you. Would this be something that we could reasonably ask for an intelligence check or something for? Yeah, go for it. That's only at 11. Anyone else? I would encourage Wink to make one. I think Wink has been the furthest into the room. A 12. Yeah, out of 12. You've been piecing this together. You can tell that the, the order to these seasons is not normal. They're kind of out of order in terms of the way you did it when they were responding to you. So you remember the different ways that you've been trying this puzzle. You did winter, then you did spring, and both those paths opened up to you and the lever stayed in place. So that seems to work. And then what you tried next was summer and things went to shit. Winter into spring was working. Okay. So I've just pulled the spring lever. So that is active and nothing else is. Okay. Then I'll pull the fall lever. Cool. 
in front of you, Link, you see your minecart. Uh, the, the, so not the one that's right next to the two levers you're working with, the third one into the room. That mm-hmm. one moves out of the way. Okay. But again, the one behind you, the one that is blocking Everett and Jib, still blocking them. Right. I think I got it. I have Jib pull the winter lever now. Okay, I do. And then that opens the one that's right in front of us. Correct. So when you do that, you see that the puzzle has been fully reset. However, the one in front of you is now open. Okay. So... So winter, spring, fall, summer. Yeah, I'll pull spring. Then I'll pull fall. And then Wink pulls summer. Yeah, and I'll pull summer. Beautiful. As expected, all four minecarts are out of your way. Cries of anguish still there. You are able to leave this room. Oh. You exit this room and you come across what is definitely a mining area and you see in front of you without any roll a pretty damn big pile of rubble and in this room and probably on the other side and maybe even underneath that rubble you are hearing the sounds of people yelling for help this is absolutely where the cave-in is so basically the way this will work is you hear an unknown number of people and each of you will make independent strength checks to see if you can get some of this rubble out and start to rescue people Okay. Jib is going to run forward and just start doing that. It's just a flat strength check. Correct. Oh, that's only a three. Jib eyes a rock that's just way too big for him to lift. Cool, cool. Can we roll athletics instead of this? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Sorry. Yeah, go for it. Oh, well, that's a five then. Do there appear to be any tools around in this room? Make a perception check. Sure. 13. On a 13, you can see maybe a pickaxe, but it's buried underneath some rubble, so you'd have to make an athletics check to get it out, and then maybe it'll give you advantage on subsequent ones. Could I try sleight of hand to maybe... Weasel it out of there? Yeah, go for it. I think that's what I'll do. I rolled a four. It's uh, not going to do it, I don't think. It's under there. It's really under there, unfortunately. Yeah, Wink gives it a shot, tries to get the pickaxe out of there, and then is just going to try and start throwing rocks out of the way. I see Wink go to do that. Can I use my crowbar to give Wink advantage on that? Yeah, I'm here for it. Okay, I guess I'll try it again. Rolled the same four. Oh. So... Okay, never mind. All right, unfortunately. As I said, I'm just going to start picking up some rocks. That's a 19 to move some rocks. Nice. Sweet. You move some rocks around and you see a hand burst out of there. Everett, let's go to you before we resolve any of that. Yep, here we go. Rolling athletics. That is an 18. Also, a hand pops out as well. We'll resolve that when you come back. Jib. Oh, that's an 8 this time. You have moved some of the rubble and the... um, you're able to more clearly hear the sound of what sounds like a man, a, you know, male tonal voice calling for help. Next time around, you'll have advantage. You're going to be moving smaller rocks. Wink, what would you like to do with this hand that's sticking out? I'm going to, I guess, attempt to pull it out from underneath. Cool. Uh, it's all right. It's all right now. We're here to help. If you can just give me a hand, so to speak, if you'll pardon the expression, and just help me move some of these stones to the side we'll have you out of there fucking help me this worker doesn't give a shit about your pun (laughs) about your hand pun screaming for help alright so we're gonna push this one together right on the count of three one two three Okay. tonight's episode of pods of the multiverse brought to you by the number four Uh. oh yikes it's a five total oh my god you are pulling at this person and not able to help them out. And at this point, I'm going to have all of you roll perception for me. Five. Fourteen. Twenty-three. Awesome. All right. Definitely you, Everett. And I think in time to signal to your companions, a cloaked figure looming in the distance, kind of up above, perched on a rock, hurl a smoke bomb in your way. Because you see this and because you signal to your party, you are able to jump back and get out of the smoke bomb's reach. And this person will fail against you in a surprise round. But however, we are going to go into initiative. Look out. We are not alone here. I got a 22. I also got a 22. I got a 16. I got a plus 3 mod. Uh, I got a plus 4 mod. Take it. Wow. This enemy rolled very high on initiative and still is 3 in the order. (laughs) Pretty awesome. All right. Everett, we start with you as this medium-sized male human in a cloak, jumps down, 
into your area. They've jumped down onto this pile with the people. They're standing there in front of you. You can see that they have a melee weapon and probably something else underneath their cloak as well. Cool. How well lit is this room? This is also pretty well lit or not? Any room that isn't the tunnel is very well lit, including this one, even with the cave. Okay. Because of Gloomstalker, I'm invisible in the dark. That's why I keep asking that. Oh, yeah. You are not in the dark, no. I back... 40 feet, because I have some extra movement because of Dread Ambusher. Shout out to Dread Ambusher for being probably the best ranger subclass ability at level 3. Back as far away as I can, I draw my bow. I shout out to this figure. Who are you? What are you doing here? I'll use my bonus action to cast Hunter's Mark, and then I hold my action to fire. Sounds awesome. That is Jim. All right, Jib is going to attempt to tackle this figure and grapple them. Nice. That's a 15. Grapple. That just misses. It's contested, so roll athletics or acrobatics. The mods are the same, 22. Oh, wow. Yeah, rolled pretty hot. Does it seem like they overpowered that grapple or slipped out of my grasp? Feels more like they slipped out of your grasp. Okay. That was Jib. We go to the as yet unknown, unnamed adversary who will say to you in reply, Everett, you do not know what I am doing. You don't know I am here. All I know is you are an ally to Fel Barosh. And he will come at you, Jib. Is this guy supposed to sound like Everett? <laughs> Oops. It's purely coincidental. <laughs> okay. I just wanted to distinguish him from a lot of the guttural people that you've met so far, so he has kind of a more flowy voice. He's going to attack Jib. Correct. I'm going to shoot him. Go for it. That's going to be a dirty 20. Dirty 20 does it. 14 points of piercing damage. Hella cool. Good hit. All right, Jib, coming at you. Jib, do you have full health or no? Close enough. But no. No. Okay, then he does have advantage against you. He has a trait called Blood Frenzy. But I don't think a 12 hits, so it didn't matter. <laughs> no. What's he attacking with? You now see it clearly in front of you. It is a sickle. That is the weapon that he is attacking with. He does have multi-attack, so he's going to try again. Okay. Holy shit. No. We tuck our tail between our legs. He does not have a tail. <laughs> I fend off both of those hits with my shield. Hell yeah. And we move on. To Wink. This sickle made of metal? It, it is, yeah. Why? What are you, oh boy. What are you doing? What are you doing? What am I doing? I'm going to heat it up. I'm going to cast heat metal on that sickle. Nice. Hell Use yeah. Heat metal. And that, if I remember from my days it's dabbling back. in warlock spells, you know, because I was a, on the up and up as Illipel, that there's no save, right? That just happens. No save. It just takes 2d8 fire damage and then must succeed on a con save or drop the object if it can. If it doesn't drop the object, it has disadvantage on attack rolls and ability checks until the start of my next turn. It takes nine fire damage and make a con save. Great. Your trickery is not appreciated, but I am an indomitable spirit. And it has indomitable. Um, it has three charges of this, so it will use that if it fails. Let's see if it does. Oh, it rolled in that one. It's using one of its indomitable charges to re-roll that fail. And that is an 18. Okay, I'm going to say this one more time, Jeffy. Stop saving against my spells. You made me nervous that I did something wrong. <laughs> I thought Scala at Rules Law was coming after me, but this is just Scala at Please no. Don't Save Against My Shit is coming at me. Got it. One time, one time I would like an adversary to fail a saving throw before this campaign is over. We're four episodes in, <laughs> it still hasn't happened. Technically, it did fail, but then it got indomitable and got the reroll. And you did make it waste one of its three charges of that. So this foe clasps the sickle even tighter in his hand, staring at you, Everett, seeing whether or not you will sling another arrow in its direction. Loose another arrow in its direction? Loose, yeah. Loose. What have you? I will loose another arrow at this adversary with a 19 to hit. Hits. And that is going to be 15 points of piercing damage. Awesome. And if there's any space still in this room before we make it back to the tunnel that we came in, I'm going to keep backing away from this enemy. This is a very large room. Sure. So I'm technically I'd be 70 feet back yeah. and change because that's two rounds of my movement. Yeah, you could take another two rounds worth of movement and continue firing if you wanted to be really, really careful. Excellent. That's the plan. Awesome. Sweet. Jib. Gonna hit him with a sword this round. Hopefully. It's nat 20. Oh, yeah. Hell yeah. Okay. Bring it home. I need another D8. I've only needed one so far. You probably won't kill him, but bring a lot of damage. There we go. 
that once a year. Mm. It's a shitty roll. That's eight piercing damage. Oh no. Yep. All right. It is your turn. That is my turn. Wait, where's Wink? Somewhere else in this room. Not near that guy. Within one round of my movement, you think? <laughs> Absolutely. You think you're going to stay ranged? Yes, I think so. Okay, I'm going to stay right here. Cool. He sees the determination in your eyes, Jib, even though you didn't land a really brutal blow. And seeing that, he's going to keep at you. What are these fucking... Okay, there we go. Awesome. He does roll these with disadvantage. He rolls them flat because he has advantage regularly against Jimmy. Ah, uh, okay. Why would he have advantage? The blood blood thing. Yep. And why does he have disadvantage? He's holding a very hot weapon. Because of heat metal? I thought I passed the con save and therefore I do not have the disadvantage. He does not drop it, but if it doesn't drop the object, it has disadvantage on attack rolls and ability checks until the start of your next turn. Got it. Okay. And that's the start of your next turn, Wink, right? Correct. Yep. Cool. So he missed his first attack, but he did roll a 22 on his second attack. Boo. Yeah. Oh, you know what? I have spell slots now. I'm going to use shield. Here it comes. Here it comes. Here it comes. All right. He's swinging a sickle at me. Does this sickle look like anything more than a normal sickle? No. I'm using shield. It misses. <laughs> Beautiful. Awesome. You raise your shield. Oh, I want to know what Jib's shield looked like. Is it just his shield? It's literally he holds up his shield. Awesome. <laughs> yes, he holds up his shield, and this assailant swings the sickle in a place where the shield is not, and the shield just sort of magically phases to that area of Jib to intercept the blow. That's cool. That's cool. That's cool. Okay. This wasn't meant to happen. This is not what I wanted it to be. But still, you interfere. Please leave me alone. From where I'm standing, you're the one what jumped down from the ceiling and started fighting us. We're just trying to help these people here. I find that hard to believe considering where you come from. Did you not see us trying to dig them out of the rubble? This person will spit on the ground and just say, All of you are liars. All right. That is the end of his turn. You can keep RPing, but Wink, it would be your turn. Yeah, I'm going to try and talk this person down because he seems like maybe he has good intentions. I don't know who you think I am or who my friends are, but I'm an honest soul. And I'm telling you the truth that we can't afford to be having this confrontation when there's folk in danger. Put down that weapon and pick up that pickaxe and help us get these folk out of here. Roll persuasion. I will. I figured. (laughs) Come on, guy. Don't fuck me over here. 15? Hmm. How about this? I'll leave. You tell no one you saw me. I look to the others. I'm willing to make that agreement. Mm, All right. People are in danger. Is his clothing, his robe, resemble at all the cultists that we've already encountered? Make a perception check. I am going to add knowledge of a past life to this because that was only a 14 and I don't think that's going to get there. Plus 5, 19. It actually would have gotten there, but on that 19, you're going to get more. No, it looks nothing like the cultist robe. This is just a cloaked figure. However, on that 19, you're taking a good look and towards the inside, you do see sticks of what looks to be dynamite. Clearly, this person is the one that set off this cave-in. I just say plainly to my allies, this is the one that caused the cave-in. Yeah, I don't think we can let you go. You do not know why I did this. It's not so simple. Well, it ain't always, but sometimes it is. You're trying to hurt power, you hurt power, not people. And I'm going to use my bonus action to continue the damage from heat metal. That's going to be another 10 fire damage. Awesome. And then as my action, Jib, you're engaged in melee with this person? I am. Okay. Yeah, I'm going to run around to the other side of him and try to get a stab in. Get a stab in. It's a 22 to hit. Oh, yeah. Ought to do. Okay. You give Wink a moral reason, and Wink rolls hot. It's just that simple. Nine piercing damage. Beautiful. Oh, and I forgot. Every time it takes damage, it needs to make a con save. Uh, okay. Let's use a charge of indomitable. That would be a 12. So I'm assuming that's a fail. That fails. So he also drops the sickle. Look, you got your fail state. Love that. Thank you. Man, he metal is good. He metal is good. It's like a, practically a fire-based spiritual weapon. Spiritual weapon still has to roll an attack roll. And spiritual weapon doesn't require concentrate yeah, balance. True. <laughs> Six of one, half yeah. dozen of the other. Anyway, that's my turn. Awesome. That is Wink. We're back to Everett. Don't shoot that dynamite. Yeah. Uh... No, there's nothing mechanically that would make that happen. <laughs> that's, not, that's not how it works. Not how that works. From this far away, can I tell how injured they're looking? You can't see specifics, but this figure is like hunched over and in pain at this point, for sure. Okay. 
Can I follow up the exchange that I just saw them have with Wink with an insight check? Yeah, what are you looking to learn? Everett is not looking for a hero in this moment. Everett is looking for truth. So you're just generally, if this person is being truthful in the way that they're saying things? Yeah. Go ahead. That's going to be an 18. Absolutely. Every word that they're saying is coming from a place of truth. (sighs) It's fucking place. And Everett takes a deep breath and it's going to aim for the knee and try and, if this chaos, this person will be non-lethal. Yeah, it hits. That is a dirty 20. What a tough boss fight though, huh? Let's give it up for uh, this boss fight being very, very difficult on dog shit rolls that I've been having. I raise my hands in the air. <laughs> no, no, I'm not commenting on any of your rolls. I'm commenting on my rolls, which were ridiculously terrible. Anyway. An ideal 16 damage. Excellent. This does knock out the adversary. Okay. Everett sighs deeply. <sighs> Stows his long bow. Wink. I... It sours my mouth to admit this, but I agree there is more here. We shall speak of this after. Let us continue rescuing these more fools. Don't need to tell me twice. I get digging. Yeah, we exit initiative. So earlier we did checks to determine if you could let anyone loose before you had an attack sprung on you. Now that there is no imminent danger, we don't need to do any of that. You're just able to get the people out. In the amount of time it took you to get through the cavern and deal with those combats, if those combats had taken longer, maybe someone would have died, but you actually don't find any dead bodies in the rubble. You're able to rescue seven people. (sighs) You can chat with them if you want, or you can send them back to the surface, whatever you want to do there. But fortunately, because you fucking killed it on those combats, I will reward you with no dead bodies, No guilt over your shoulders. Y'all can get a nice night's sleep tonight, guilt-free. I want to rifle through this assailant's belongings. Other than the sticks of explosives, do they have anything else on? In various pockets, you just see they've stuffed as much wraithocyte as they can, but they also have other kinds of ores. Based on what you're seeing from what they've looted around here, they're not hyper-focused on wraithocyte in the way the cultists would be. They're just grabbing various ores that look to be of value. They also have a sack full of them as well. And how much explosive do they have on them about? You can find two sticks of dynamite. You don't really know how many they use to cause the cave in, (laughs) um, but it's not much. We'll discuss the mechanical effects of that potentially later, but uh, Wink will collect those. I want to tie this guy up. I want to help Jib tie this guy up. Yeah, cool. Yeah, cool. I know you are a rope expert, but just in case. Thinking this is a sleight of hand? Yeah, you get advantage because you're Jib. Cool. And it's an unmoving body. Yes. That's a dirty 20. This fucker's not going anywhere. Yeah. I tie a really elaborate kind of knot that we'd only use on the docks when we really don't want it to move at all. I thought you were going to say you use the kind of knot that you tie somebody to the mast with. I'm not a sailor. (laughs) (laughs) That's right. That's a big difference. Sorry. No mutineers on shore. And I don't think Jib's that cold-blooded. Anyway. I also want to get a really good look at this guy's face. What does he look like? No, like, Bond villain distinguishing features. <laughs> it's a run-of-the-mill human male. Nothing sinister. Just a guy. Brown, long, wavy hair. You know what? Looks like fucking... Um, Matt Mercer. No, no. I don't know why I said that with disdain. It's just because it visually doesn't look anything. The actor that played Daenerys's like, right-hand dude in, like, seasons four and five. What the fuck's his name? Grey Worm? Not Grey Worm. Not Grey Worm. The long, wavy hair guy. No, you're the thinking fancy of the, boy. the oh, fancy um, God. Dario um, Naharis. Dario Naharis. Uh, yeah, yeah. Not the first actor, the second actor that played him with the, the stubble and all that. Looks like that. That's right. All they right, changed fine. actors. They did. For some reason. Part. Yeah, for some random dumb reason. I make a mental note of this person's face for reasons that may or may not matter later. Is there anything else on him? Any, like, notes? Anything? Nope. Interesting. I don't know if Wink wants to talk to any of the victims, but I'm going to head back for that office. I guess it depends on what they're willing to say once they get out. I don't want to pester them if they've just been through this traumatic experience. They don't need to be answering a bunch of questions. Yeah, they're definitely rattled. Every one of them is definitely rattled. There are a few of them, so they're saying things like, I just need to get out of here. I can't wait to get out of here. We haven't had shit like this happen in so long. Workplace trauma response. So So yeah, yeah, I'll say this. 
Y'all get up to the surface. Come by the clam later, buy us a drink, and uh, we'll have some questions for you once you're good and settled. What's on the other side of this site? Like, what was behind all that rubble? Just a wall. This is the back end of the cavern where they're doing a lot of the mining. I see. I'm assuming you all let the people make their way back out safely, and then you grab this assailant. Yep, I'll drag him. Drag him. And you all take a pit stop at that office? Yes. Yes, very much. Very much. (laughs) Actually... On the way back through the minecart room, I wouldn't mind pocketing some of that rathesite, to be honest. Well, this guy is also loaded up with rathesite. You can also pocket it from this person, <laughs> but whatever you want. Do they look different or do they look more or less the same? I want to just really be clear. This person has more than just rathesite. It's other nodes, but like the rathesite, the rathesite. There's nothing different. Yeah. So in other words, there wouldn't be really a very distinguishing feature that would give the notion that they're coming from different sources. There's no way to tell any of that. It all looks the same. Yeah. 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 For sure. Okay. Okay. All right. Cool. So you're back in the office and you see the desk in that office. What would you like to do? Can we take a short rest here? Yeah. Not that I anticipate any more combat tonight, but you know. Right. You mean you could go back <laughs> in the tunnels for no good reason and dismally fail some survival checks? Who knows? Take a short rest. Fuck it. You got it. It's there for you. Get through to my six damage there. Yeah. I'm going to start looking through this desk for anything suspicious about, you know, why ever the fuck this mine would be attacked like this. I'm assuming you want to like rifle through the drawers of the desk and stuff like that. Because there's nothing on the desk. The desk is empty, but there are drawers. I see. Yeah. I want to turn this room over. Okay. Yeah. And as we're short resting in here, I'll obviously play my song of rest. Hard times in the wraith side mines. Union got busted. Mine carts rusted. Cloak figures running around can't be trusted. Do 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 do. Well, think of something else to go there. No, that's good. It's good so far. <laughs> it's good so far. <laughs> awesome. It's an additional two hit points. I wasn't that hurt. Missing one damage. I rolled a 10 on my D10. Yeah, no one was fucking hurt because my boss rolled like an ass wipe. And I'll use my remaining D8s. Nice. Back at full. Nice. When you're all done with your rest, I'm going to give it to Everett. If anyone else wants to, you can. But Everett seems to be the one really rooting and tooting around this desk. Give me an investigation. We'll see what you find. That's a 15. Awesome. Awesome. In the top left drawer, you find a letter that just says, While we sent for help and carried in of all, it would be wise of you to take us up on the security detail offer. Fail himself is in agreement. We're here for you. Signed, Garen Kang. You can make a history check if you'd like. 23 on a nat 20. Zero? <laughs> Not zero. <laughs> <You say> zero? <laughs> on a zero, Wink's roll is undone. Cool. On a 23, everyone, even on a zero, you know this. Garen Kang is the head of Vetus. On a 23, Wink, you would remember when you were maybe first signing your contract, your recruiter or whatever, that kind of got you set up with Vetus, mentioned that like... Vetus is known for overstaffing every one of its contracts. One of their whole missions is to overstaff projects. They do it because it's part of their competitive edge, and they do it because it makes them more money. The more people they have working cases and working contracts, the more money that they can contract out. So that's what you can guess from that. I would have made you roll insight, but based on that history check, there's nothing imminently suspicious or evil seeming about this letter. This seems very much like, oh my God, it's... Vetus being Vetus again, trying to get people to take on more resources that they need so they can make more money. Okay. But actually, you can roll insight for an additional detail. Sure. I mean, just from what's in the text, depending on the circumstance, one might presume a protection racket, but, you know, with Wink's 12 insight, maybe that's not immediately apparent. (laughs) It's not. (laughs) Okay. If there was anything that felt odd and off about Any of it, whether it's the letter itself or the fact that nothing was done about this letter, you're not really getting anything there. And I'll allow one additional investigation check while you're rooting through this desk. That is an unnatural 20. All right. Oof. The bastard 20 reveals a book that says standard operating procedures. And you open it, and the first page you find, because you roll a 20, says, if we got a spineless crew that doesn't feel like taking them tunnels... Remember that they can always hit the levers in the right order to circumvent our pulley system. Frigid, warm, (laughs) cool, hot. Anyway. Wink steps out of the material plane. (laughs) Not one for drama. Screams into Florida right behind you. 
<laughs> and waves their middle oh, fingers it. around. <laughs> Wink is a planeswalker. <laughs> Major spoilers that needs to be redacted. That better be bleeped. <laughs> Ravnica season six. <laughs> Super meta. That's it. That's all you can find in this desk. That's everything there is to find. Otherwise, it's just some typical kind of names, attendance, shit, stuff like that. Everything else you find is very much above board. Nothing sticks out. Mm. There's nothing about like the ham order for the week or... uh... (laughs) There is actually... I don't even know if this would ever be on a ledger, but it, it's, it's flavor I want, so we're going to do it. You see a ledger that kind of insinuates that Grent himself paid for a very large special ham as kind of a way to help the crew feel better about the Union getting disbanded. Oh my god, it's the fucking pizza party it's the trick. Pizza. This piece of shit! <laughs> it's the pizza party trick. Grant's a foreman. He's not a manager. Yeah, no, I, I actually I was trying to paint that as like, Grant, you know, can't do anything about it and was trying to do something for the crew he can't help. Aww. But anyway, it, it also does feel like pizza party, for sure, though. You're not wrong. Wow. Yikes. Other than that, nothing else in the desk. You want to keep making your way back to the entrance? In the very linear path, not tunnel network. Yes. Awesome. There is one room that you did not see when you were... There were two. Right on the onset, there were a couple of things. The first room, and then you also skipped over two rooms, which are the same, but they're just wash rooms. There's really nothing there. So the first room, however, is a storeroom, and I'd welcome you all to make a perception check in here as well. Yeah. Everett's getting increasingly more suspicious with all this nonsense. <laughs> 10. 18. 16. Yeah, on a 16, you're able to see a variety of barrels and sacks filled with different types of ore. But on some of those high rolls, you take your time looking around and you do see in one barrel, you are able to open it up and take a look around. I will invite, who rolled the highest perception? I think I got an 18. You did. Okay. Wink, I'll have you then, since you are doing the most diligent looking around, please roll investigation as you open up one of these barrels. Okay. Wow, uh, 19. Beautiful. All right. You easily make out a trap bottom to this. Hell yeah. And you see it has like a little bit of extra storage, and you see some Wraithesite packed in there. Ooh. And you see just a slip. There's a slip of paper that just says, send to the aisle. An aisle spell I-S-L-E, like an island. Yep. I will show this to the rest of the party. What do y'all make of this? Quite curious. Everett, you got a good look at the map. I don't know if you can remember if there's any notable islands off the coast of Icewind Dale here. Ah, yes. Thank you for reminding me. Everett's going to think about that. Can I roll something? Since you're kind of digging through your memory of what you saw on maps, I'll call this history instead of nature. Okay. That is a dirty 20. Cool. There were several islands around some of the outskirts of Icewind Dale, and there are also islands in some of those bigger bodies of landlocked water as well. So you can't say for sure, and none of them were marked with any specific name. None of them... Mm, No markings. Yeah, and none of them were marked like Isle of or Blank Isle. So you really don't know. All you really know from this slip is that someone is orchestrating separated shipments of Raid to Sight to some island somewhere. Would I remember if there are any of those islands near here, like an inland one or something like that? No, there are none that are immediately close, like in terms of you would just be able to go and check it out right now. Okay, okay, cool. Nothing is coming to mind. Looking at this send to the isle note, does it compare to the handwriting of any of the other things we found in the off? No, so the one letter was written by Garen Kang. Right. And... Everything else that you found was written by Grent. Neither of this handwriting matches uh, either of those two. Okay. Great question. And I give it to you because you rolled a damn good investigation. Okay. Awesome. Anything else you want to do? Otherwise, the entryway and exit is right in sight. There was nothing else in that storeroom. Not that I ever wrote in my notes. Those were good rolls. I hope you're content with the content I have given you. Content with content. A nice bit of bird play. I like that. Speaking of bird play. There's an album by the books, uh, or a song called Smells Like Content. And I don't know if it's content or content, because there are no lyrics in it. And it really bothers me that I'll never know what the word they're trying to say for that song title is. Anyway, what do y'all do? I think it's time we had a word with Grant now. Lead the way. I lead the way. Cool. You make your way outside. As you make your way out, you see Grant standing over a few of the injured people, talking to them, seeing how they're faring after this incident. But he turns around and notices the three of you and dragging this robed figure behind you. Yeah, I'm going to drag this guy and drop him at Grant's feet. What happened here? Found your problem. So this son of a bitch that caused it, huh? 
It appear that way. You recognize this feller? I knew it wasn't my people. Grant kicks over the body and the hood of the robe falls back. Never seen this person in my life. Insight check. Go for it. Every time I grab my d20 as if I'm rolling against it. <laughs> Jeppy just can't help being a player in his own game. 18. Grant's never seen this person before. I give sort of a nod to Wink. You got yourself another problem that you may or may not be aware of, and I show Grant the slip that says send to the aisle. Some of them barrels had some false bottoms with a bit of extra wraith side in it. You got any idea where they might be sending that? Grant rolls his eyes immediately. This is not the shit I wanted to be dealing with. This is the last time that we need to be dealing with this kind of shit. Well, look, the reality is... Nobody's really paid too good around here. I mean, you kind of got to expect that some people are going to pull shit like this. New back channels to be selling what they need to sell to make ends meet. But at a time when we're... You did not answer the question. What was the question again? Okay. How did you word it, rather? Do you know where this might be that they're sending it to? Oh, oh, okay. Uh, you're right. I did not answer the question. But no, I do not know what the aisle is. That could be fucking anywhere. Another insight check. <laughs> Go for it. <laughs> This one's a 16. On a 16, what he's saying is true, absolutely. You can tell from his body language and from the way he said it that he may have an idea of a couple of isles that would be interested in Wraithocyte, whether it's because he knows of a few islands with either cult activity or maybe small towns that would want to try and use this for other means. He may have a few ideas of different islands that could be interested in this, but he's not purposefully lying about that. He's just kind of saying, it could be anywhere. How the fuck am I supposed to tell you what island this is going to? There are a lot of islands. All right, how about this? You know any isle where there's a concentration of black sword cult activity? I mean, they kind of move around a lot. It's hard to say. I don't know any specifically. You could probably talk to some of those fanatics about Oral. They know a lot, but far as I remember, when you get close to where she's at, a lot of the islands nearby have cult activity. I do not know if it's Black Sword. Well, I reckon if you want people to stop skimming like, you might want to encourage Mr. Fail Barash to pay people what they need to get along. Elsewise, this is going to be a problem that you're not going to be able to abate. It's been so many fucking years with this problem. I know. It's always that problem. Do you think I want my operation running like this? I don't know what to think about you. I don't know you. I can respect that. I don't really know you either. You find anything else in there? Anything else Vetus is going to want to know? I can't think of anything else to mention. I don't think so. Look, if you found nothing else wrong with my operation, that's good news. I'm not happy to hear about this to-the-aisle bullshit, especially what with the Lonelywood dilemma going on and us not really making good trade routes lately. This is the last fucking thing I need to deal with, but I'll figure out who's responsible. Not a question about it. Look, if you're done, I would recommend highly that you get this piece of shit out of here. These people are going to kill him the moment they get a chance. And if you need him for more questioning, he better be gone. There's a sheriff or anything like that in town? Cyril was kind of our militia. Haven't seen her since the election. She kind of left in a fit, like a child. Couldn't really handle the loss. Didn't expect that from her. Expected better. Do you have a drunk tank that you throw Vernon in time to time? We might be staying the night, and I need some place secure to keep this suspect. I mean, get yourself a room at the Blue Clam. Probably as best you can do. That's not a bad idea. I barricaded the door. I'll come in. Maybe something in a basement. I suppose we'll make do. Well, Grant... You've been very helpful. I don't know if that's true, but I say that to everyone. <laughs> <laughs> that's great. I pick this guy up by the robe again and start walking away, dragging him behind me. Awesome. You make it back to the blue clam. You have no problem checking in. We'll just go ahead and right past that. So you check into the blue clam. You find yourself a room. You all get a room together, I'm assuming, so you can keep a watch on this perp and barricade the door, right? Sure. As we settle into this room, I'm going to go ahead and use one of my last spell slots to cast Snare in front of the door, in case anybody comes a peek in. Awesome. You all settle into your room, discarding your belongings and getting yourself settled in. The Stone of Sending? Sending Sending Stone. stone. The Sending Stone begins to vibrate and chime and make a noise. (laughs) Yes. (laughs) Oh, the original, the OG Nokia phone sound. You can also play the snake game on this if you'd like. I put it to my ear. Anyway, you put this <laughs> you put this to your ear, and it is Kessa. It is end of day. I would like an end of day report, please. Kessa called. She wants to know what we've been doing. And I think that is a good place to end our session. Pause. 
Pods of the Multiverse is produced by Jimmy Afadigato. That's me, with music by Andy Berger and art by Alexa Riley. Subscribe to this feed to get a new episode every Monday. Check out the links in the show notes. You can support us by visiting our Patreon, joining our Discord, or sharing this episode with a friend. We want to give a special shout out to our Holy Avengers, Jake, May, and Chris. For $10 a month on our Patreon, you too can become a Holy Avenger. Thanks for listening.